And so we are just a few moments away from tipping things off for our officials today, Joseph Vasili, Alyssa Green, and Nick Kappel on the call as Duke starts off with the ball. We are now underway. Thanks everyone for joining us as Florida State is also recognizing former coach Soup Simarau after 25 seasons retiring. So we look forward to having her on the broadcast as well. Duke who has had a few games starting slow on the offensive end. Carol Lawson talked about how they needed to be a little bit more poised. That's not what she was looking for out of the tip. Yeah, definitely don't want to start with a turnover, but I like to see the emphasis of getting the ball into the paint. Florida State does a great job at protecting the paint, but Duke doesn't want to shy away from that. They still want to score inside. And this was another thing that Brooke Wyckoff was talking about with her team. How do we handle ourselves in their full court press? That has been a question for all teams in the ACC. They had a good look there, just nothing was able to be converted. Against this new pressure, that is going to be something that Florida State's going to need to do is be able to break it, but also not miss chippies like that. They're going to want the layups like those to go in. You can see that at the bottom of your screen, the Duke starting five, not much has changed within that group. We did mention Balagoon earning her rights, and Michaela Tipson pits Florida State on the board first. Kind of going coast to coast for the layup, but, you know, interesting to see the game settle in. Duke starting with now three turnovers in a row. Just ranks in the top five. You wouldn't assume that there would be any communication errors there. Yeah, unlike them, um, especially to start the game, you know, usually that's when you're most locked in. And, uh, you know, just a communication error right there for sure. Vegetti tries to dish it off on the inside. And how about Timpson? Timpson, the sophomore out of Edison, Georgia, standing at 6'2", plays more like she's 6'6". Very physical on the inside. Brown short on the play. You can see the sense of urgency from Florida State, how they're getting the ball up the court. You know, I expect to see that coming off of that loss against Notre Dame where they didn't shoot it well, they didn't feel good about how they played. There was a, a lot of things that they could fix and do better, and they've been great at home all season. So I'm not surprised by how they started this game. Well, starting off, 6-0 start for Florida State. Duke has come out and started this game. Uh, Vanessa De Jesus has been a very consistent, steady point guard presence for this Duke team. Celeste Taylor short on the three, another offensive board. Balagoon gets the in one with a nice strong post move. She has position. She gathers herself. She goes up against the contact and finishes to give herself a chance at the three point play. Can't connect on the three point play, but just something to be mindful of as well. Coach Brooke Wyckoff was telling us that we have to make sure we keep them off the glass. Seen some OMG moments from her <laughs> throughout her season already with Florida State. Tania Latson, that's something she can do well. Three games in ACC play, but. That first Boston College game, she only shot two free throws. From there, she shot four, five, 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 and three. Before that, she was 15 for 15. To do, she's a very dynamic guard, but the challenge is to be able to defend her, keep her in front of you, and not foul, and give her those easy points at the line. A nice interior pass. Kendi Brown gets that one to go a little physical push on the inside, but that's everything we expected to see on the interior. Yeah, Mia Heidi, she actually came off of a great third quarter against Virginia Tech where she, you know, defensively held it down for the Blue Devils, but she also had a little offensive spark in that game. Amaria picks up the foul there. And now we see the full court press from Duke it was one way they said how can we get points turns it over there Oliver once again back-to-back -back buckets for Oliver Latson finds the ball back in her hands Bajetti quick three and is knocked down by Oliver quick release Bajetti as we mentioned, just one of those players, I can say for both sides, in the last five games has been very impressive in how she's been able to step up, shooting a very efficient in college loss, but I feel like she took that confidence and she's continued to be a force on the offensive end, looking for her shot, being aggressive, where she's traditionally been known as an irritant defender. Over their last seven, I'm sorry, free throws, and eight on the shot clock, Brown turns around, bounce out of bounds, and Timpson,
quick as they come. She just gets it out of that pressure. She gets in the middle, gets right into the seams, takes a nice little pull up from the ACC and knocks it down. That foul was on Heidi. Oh, and a double dribble at the top of the key. Both teams really getting the ball up the floor, whether it's off the pass or the dribble. We have another turnover, this time by Latson. Get them to take tough shots and get the rebound and get out in transition or off of turnovers, being able to attack the paint and give yourself a chance. Ball game. After a slow start from Duke, right out of the gate, Florida State got off to a 6 0 start. So Duke has done that before, North Carolina, their first attempt, and then Syracuse came in their home and did the same thing as well, but they were able to get that one out with a win. Tipson underneath. We talked about the physicality. She's shown it in the first half. It's extremely physical, but that is, like I said, she's a composed player. She sticks with it, gets the loose ball and the offensive rebound, and is able to make a tough finish under the basket. This on the outside, stoppage of play. And there's a three-second call. Here you see KK Tempson getting offensive rebounds like she does and finishes. That's a tough finish. And being able to control that ball with the defense right there grabbing at it, she's off to a great start. <laughs> nice look on the inside by Valenzuela. Almost runs through that one from Oliver. She's able to track it down. Forsdale sends it up to Adea Seuss, and she knocks it down for the three. Sarah Bajetti waiting to the 10 second mark. Rips it around at the top of the key. Valenzuela thought she had something. Timpson can't get anything off over Heidi. So that will bring the first quarter to an end. We saw a little bit of everything. You can see the zone that's applied from Florida State. Latson trying to get a hand on it. Richardson recovers. Dave Wilson and Celeste Taylor have been held scoreless so far. Looking for their first points in the second quarter. Taylor with a nice rebound. It's a great offensive rebound, but this Florida State defense is really doing a good job. Another thing to look at is Duke is out rebounding Florida State by four at this point. You can't give teams extra possessions. So Florida State will definitely have to lock in and really try to control that defensive board. A lot of times so far in this game, Duke's press has been able to and you see the nice and one from Michaela Timpson. As a sophomore, she just really is even keeled. You never see her get too high or too low, and she just shows up and does what's needed for her team to be successful. She's doubled her points average since her freshman season. She was averaging about six. There, and now you can see how she just continued to just blossom in her sophomore year. Richardson curls, baseline shot, bounces off. Did a nice job of being able to have a quick release on that shot. But again, Florida State is there on every catch. Timpson tried an up and under move, gets her own rebound, and a lot of hands come in, coming in. Celeste Taylor. It really is tough on every night, no matter where you are in the standings in this league. Have the eight. 18 and two overall record, eight and one in ACC play. Their first loss in ACC play came to North Carolina, and that was a slow start for them as well. Went down to the wire in that rivalry. So as far as the adjustments coming into the second quarter, Duke really tying it down on the defensive end. Majetti held up. Nice transition defense by Duke as well. Yeah. Which is going to be important especially the way that this Florida State team likes to get the ball up the floor and score in transition. Duke's going to have to run sprint back, play physical. But it's been an emphasis that Florida State is great from the free throw line. So the more that you foul them, the more you give them chances at the line. They're already five of nine. Allen's well it steps up to the free throw line. All right, coming up next, we'll take you to Clemson for the Tigers, taking on 15th ranked North Carolina and the quadruple header capped off by Virginia, hosting number 12, Virginia Tech. And Deja Kelly just really emerging in her last few games. 
It's a great offensive rebound by De Jesus. And a travel violation. They need to finish it. They need to capitalize off of their hustle plays. And that includes offensive rebounds. I tell you this, as far as both teams struggling offensively, it's been a scoring drought for Duke, closing in on the four minute mark. And no field goals for Florida State in the last three minutes as well. Outside of that, must have heard me on the broadcast. <laughs> Taylor O'Brien is now on the scoreboard. And with, able, with everything she was able to do. I was glad I wasn't coaching. And, and I'll tell you, it was tough. So she is prepared and has done a phenomenal job so far with this team. Looking at it from my perspective, one of the coolest things just seeing how you've been honored is just seeing how you've built the program. And so you can see the different things that you've been able to do, the three Elite Eights, the appearances in the NCAA tournament, and the two ACC championships. But what it comes down to is that you're a builder of community and people. And so I can say that it's very impressive on our side just seeing the community come together. And one thing that I really valued was how you, uh, you made us see how important it was mm -hmm. to give back. Well, I think it comes from all of the players. They know why they're here. They, they want to work together. And it, they don't care who gets the credit. It's been fantastic to watch that continue. Brooke started that as a player. So going back to even now, how Duke is really emerging in this ball game. We said it was going to be a slugfest as far as the number one scoring defense, the number one scoring offense. But as far as Florida State, last couple of trips down the floor, we've seen some turnovers. Michaela Timpson trying to see if she can get something there. And that's a travel call. So that's three consecutive turnovers for Florida State. Well, you know this is an elite level when the score is 20 to 22 at this point. I mean, this is an elite level defense on both sides. So right now, Duke on a 7-0 run, scoring drought for close to three minutes for Florida State. But most importantly, they've given up four turnovers in the last two minutes as well. And Duke now ties this ball game, 22 all. Backdoor cut by Latson, no connection there. As Florida State looking for their first bucket in three minutes. Aaron Howard sends it at the top of the key. Gordon with a much needed bucket. As they give Florida State the lead. They all say, we were challenged. We wanted to be great as Latson gets the nice still here. Uh -oh. And a beautiful block by Celeste Taylor from behind. Celeste Taylor, we talked about it. Kara Lawson said she doesn't have to just score in order for her to impact this team. She does all the little things, and you can just see right there, not building on that two-point lead that Florida State has with less than 90 seconds to go in this first half. It's a toughness. You can easily give that layup up and just let it go. Maybe not wanting a foul, but she's a she's a tough competitor, and she and that's wanted what I to say get that again, play. Just elite level play. Yep, elite. Maxingill can't connect. Gordon is able to scoop that one up. Works away on the inside, bounces around. Timpson O oh board. Timpson another O oh board. Timpson draws the foul. I need to get the number on her wingspan. She's super long. Super long, yes. We talked about her being one of those players that has to be recognized for most improved. Yeah, a good friend of yours and a tremendous player. <laughs> I think I love her communication. You don't always see post players that are communicating. And now she's going coast to coast. A block ball. She said, you know what? I can do it all for Florida State at this point. Compare her to anyone that you've seen in your time. Who would it be and why? It's a great question. You know, she is a lot like Sint, uh, Jacinta Monroe with her length. And you mentioned Jacinta Monroe having a blocks record, but she took over Brooke Wyckoff's block record. Yep. And you've been a part of that from start to finish. So that's really awesome that you get to see that and witness it as well. Six seconds left. Oh. Hey, Jesus. Sends it to Oliver. Oliver to Brown on the inside. It's knocked away a little bit. Bounces around. And a nice rebound by Aaron Howard. Nine seconds left for Florida State. As we bring the first half to a close, we've seen a little bit of everything. Six-point lead for Florida State. Latson at the lead. <laughs> at the buzzer and gets it to go. 
in that first quarter they had six alone so just a slow start for them offensively as we get things going in the second half but more importantly the 8-0 run that Florida State went on at the end of that second quarter in order to give them the eight-point lead at this point yeah, if you're going to want to see Florida State uh, take care of the ball. So as we reset, Angel Gray here with you alongside former Duke standout, Jasmine Thomas. You got to call yourself former Florida State Duke uh, standout today, too. Today? Yeah. I don't know. Today? <laughs> I feel like I sat a lot. Less than five to go on the shot clock. Michaela Tipson going at Brown off the glass. And why not? Kisses it for another two. She's been nominated for Player of the Week as well with a couple of nice performances that she's had. Top of the key look for Taylor, who has struggled. Only one field goal for her on this ball game. One for seven, 0 for three from three. Bajetti gets her in the air and gets the two to drop. Just to go back to Timpson as well. She's coming off of a double-double. Now, they didn't get the results that they wanted from Notre Dame. Their lowest scoring output of the season at 47. Latson, full speed ahead. The Seminoles just look comfortable. They look like they are playing their game. It's what you expect to see from them coming off of that Notre Dame game. It's a different team today. I think, too, just are you surprised at all that it's only six fast break points for them? I am surprised. I think they could have converted a little better in the, I would want to say, around the first quarter. But, I mean, they're getting some opportunities. Richardson misses the mark there. Majetti there to clean up the play. Duke shooting 18, 17% from the field. But this is a team that has attempted more threes than any other team in the ACC. Like I said, they're comfortable. They're playing their style of basketball. They have not had to rely on shooting threes. Duke has shot nine free throws. Florida State, 17. Florida State averages 22 free throws a game. Today, they've already shot the 17, so something to definitely keep an eye on. This on the inside. This one falls in the hands. You know, Duke needs to kind of adjust to the game. They've been get calling it all game. That is why Florida State has been getting to the free throw line. That's why the foul numbers are high. Um, they, they want to play tough defense, but they got to do it without fouling. Nice dish today, Jesus in transition. A rare bucket for Duke. And as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, their bench has really kept them in this ball game. As far as their starters, they only have four field goals amongst the five. Timpson just continues to pile it on. So her single game high as far as career points. You see Celeste Taylor as well trying to do her part in keeping the ball out of Latson's hand. We asked Coach what the scouting report would be against tonight. And she said limit her touches. Easier said than done. The key kind of changes pace and just gets down a lane line for a layup. If it's the communication, it's kind of Duke running into each other. And now here you have her again in the open floor. Latson thought about the three. Valenzuela all the way to the rim. And you can't be surprised by it because they got beat by Notre Dame on that the game before. And they were disappointed with that performance. So to see them make that change this game is exactly what I'm sure Coach Wyckoff is happy to see her team do. To continue to struggle from the field, Florida State right now on a 6-0 run over the last minute. That can't connect. And that was their first miss in their last three trips. Celeste Taylor trying to work her way all the way in. You made a lot of shots on this court. We'll let you have it. <laughs> she on the half court. Yay! Plenty of good battles here. Yeah, was absolutely. That Duke Florida State matchup. Down the stretch, it just comes down to how is Duke going to generate some offense on this end? I think you'll see the press. They, you know, that's their bread and butter. They're going to stick to the press, try to speed them up, try to get some turnovers. So I think they just made it tough. You know, they've been there on every catch. They've been physical. Um, they've done a good job defensively as well. Duke nine for 48 from the field, as we mentioned, shooting less than 20%. Sarah Bajetti, it's just been the Knowles. And they're scoring quick. You know, they're scoring in the first few seconds of the shot clock. And Is that one rims in and out. It's the second of the pair. How they've been trying to get it over Timpson, but 
They just haven't been able to connect. Seventeen to six advantage. Shooting close to eighty percent from the free throw line. And you see the Duke defense relax. To me, I feel like they still need to stay up in pressure and keep speeding Florida State up. Gordon misses the mark. They're saying it's a foul on the inside. Leaving a few of them out there at the free throw line. And leaves another six for 11 from the free throw line. And she's a terrific scorer. She is someone that can create their own shot. So to maybe see her look to be a little aggressive going into the fourth quarter. On the free throw line, which she has been to more than any player in this ball game. So she shot 12 free throws. Duke has shot 15 as a team. Knocks down the second as Florida State has just owned this third frame of the ball game. Going back to the second quarter, Duke was able to go on that 9-0 run to tie it at 22 after a slow start. I think Richardson has been one of those players that has been showing us a lot in her previous games, but can definitely step it up. Definitely going to use all of this time to not give Florida State another opportunity to score in the corner. Off the mark, an O board, nothing there, but finally Richardson. You know, she's just a sophomore, so she's coming into her own. Played her freshman season at VGA. Uh, Big Jesus is able to knock that one out. Who does it go off of? They'll say it goes back to the Knoll. Full court, Timpson thought about it. The crowd wanted her to shoot it. As you can see, just a rebound away. As you can see, the tail of the tape on the side of the screen as well. Latson trying to get to the rim. Nothing called there. There's an order to step up, and they have the minutes as well. We've seen her go deep into her bench more than any other team in the ACC. So how do they step up now with a little under nine minutes to go in this ball game? Well, penetrating, kicking, and finding some wide open jumpers. They've had some success. I want to see if they can get Kennedy Brown involved a little bit more as well as that rolls out for Balagoon. And that's a great look. Those are the shots that I'm talking about. They, they have some good looks. You just got to finish them. And Florida State just keeps scoring. Gets the assist from Timpson, so she just does it all. Timpson gets a stop there as well. As Duke in desperate need of a bucket. Bajetti. When does it become go time for even Cheyenne Day Wilson? Who's 0 for 3 from the field at this point as that hit misses the mark for Heidi. I mean, I've seen Coach Lawson a few times from the sideline kind of just, you know, ushering her team to go, go, push it up the floor. Don't get hesitant, you know, keep playing their basketball, keep hunting for shots. Turnage turns around. Misses the box. Is that one of those games where you say, throw away the tape, or we're going to watch the tape? They definitely made that emphasis, and they responded. Coming into this one for Florida State, and they have not disappointed. Tania Ladson with 11 points. She leads the league in scoring, as well as Timpson with 19 and 9, seeing if she can pick up her third 20-point performance of the season. Latson. Latson knocks down the first. After our women's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC. We saw another former Duke in the studio with Lexi Brown in the studio. Yeah. With them as well. So you guys just taking over the broadcast. Trying to. Trying to <laughs> dabble a little bit on the media side of things.
That one short for Borden, but it's the second opportunity in the N1 bucket. Florida State just seems like the hungrier team. They really do. You see Gordon there, she misses her shot. She say on an almost air ball maybe, saves it from going out of bounds, gets it to her teammate who gets an offensive rebound. As Dane Wilson looking for her first, first points of the ball game. Young in her career hasn't been seen with this type of adversity, but even going through her box scores, she's had moments and it's been somewhat of a roller coaster at the beginning of the season, trying to see her footing and what she was going to be. The last five games, she's really put on and shown us what she can be offensively, but how does she bounce back from this type of performance? You know, I think it's been more of a growth opportunity for her. And you mentioned just how impressive she's been in your eyes, but most importantly, it's just been her poise and sense of urgency in each possession. Yeah, she just plays really hard. I love that she's a communicator. You know, I love when post players are communicators on the floor and leaders for their team. Has 10 double-doubles on the season. She's recorded six block shots for the second consecutive game as well, as Richardson walking and seeing if she can get past Timpson. And that looked like a clean block. I mean, but I love the aggression. I love to see her just take it in there, not be afraid. And, you know, she rewards herself at the free throw line. But I don't know. She has seven points, three for four from the free throw line as well. This is the second of the pair. Shirley Timpson is in to get that rebound. We got to get that double double, right? You would think that <laughs> at this point you just toss it off the rim as Cheyenne Day Wilson finally able to get her first field goal of the ball game. So a travel at the top of the key as we also see Snoop Turnage who left the ball game right before the break. She has ice on her knee at this point, came out in crutches as well. Dave Wilson, back-to-back -back buckets from the, from the field. Yeah, and you want to see her stay aggressive to score. Hasn't been the night for the Blue Devils scoring the ball. Hasn't been her night, but she's capable. We've seen it, and you want to see her stay aggressive. But it doesn't help when you are trading buckets at this point in the ball game if we see a couple of the reserves in for Florida State as well. Top of the key back, Iron Timpson. I think comes down with a rebound, tips it out to Latson. And doesn't have it there, Latson. You know what? She has six 30 plus point games on the season. So you see a night like today. Quick six points, seven points rather. Got her first point at the free throw line, but could walk away in this ball game in double figures. Say Jesus gets a nice look at the other end. It's starting to really come along in this ball game. Maybe a little too late, but has the eight points. And a turnover right out of the timeout. Brooke Wyckoff called the timeout, not too pleased with how her team was performing. The closest went out, Celeste Taylor poked from behind. Brown finds it, rims out, and it's been that type of night for Kennedy. Yeah, it really has, but it's, I'm not surprised that Coach Brooke would call that timeout because like I said, it's important how you finish the game. It doesn't matter if you're gonna win the game, it doesn't matter if you're up, if you're down. You wanna finish the game strong and take that into your next game. And it's next game indeed. But they pull this one out. As Oliver gets the look, left hand and no good. Had a heartfelt message to her teammates and the fans. So we wish her. And just like that, Timpson has the double-double she was looking for. 21 and 10. That's her third 20-point performance of the season, Dave Wilson. Too little, or, you know, too late. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's something that you look at. Um, just need some more of that earlier in the game. After Notre Dame, as Balagoon is struggle from the floor as well. She only has one field goal that has gone down. A much better performance in that Notre Dame game. And they'll see Wake Forest next on February 2nd. Wake Forest, as we mentioned at the top of the game. 
As Latson trying to work her way through some traffic, and that's going to be an offensive foul. So Day Wilson, the only player in double figures for Duke. Her egregious movements. Yeah, I think the right decision. You know, Bajetti's a tough player. She didn't swing the elbow, so maybe that's why it ended up, oh, how it was. And <laughs> Fourteen points for Cheyenne Day Wilson, but it's uh, not enough as we see the final ticks on the clock for Florida State. No foul is going to be assessed, so they'll dribble this one out as they get a win on their home court and continue to protect home court as they move to 19 and five.